is that how the constant concentration on racism or race or how how you know someone treats me bad, I don't like the way those white folks treat me, demobilizes the ability to talk about what is the system that puts you in a position where that white person can look at you as inferior in the first place? What are the economic structures that are causing your community to live in a way where people can look at you as inferior? Is it just that he looks like the way your skin looks, or is it the way is it that your skin or your image is attached to a quality of life that is lower than his because of policies that have been put through consistently over time? And as long as you keep talking about how your skin is not being justly treated, as opposed to how those policies created that situation and how those policies affect him in larger numbers than you, then we end up in this kind of verbal circle jerk. We're just talking about racism all the time. We're not the structural and, 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 and let me just all. Yeah, and let me just add one thing to that. When 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 you when you made that point, this is what initially occurred to me, and this is something that I have found problematic for a very long time. Black people have come to the defense of Barack Obama whenever he's attacked by white racism, by racists on the whites, on the on the right. And here's the problem with that, as far as I can see, and it kind of ties into what you're saying. Barack Obama is a very rich black man. He's an affluent, he's an affluent black man. And the problem is he has. When you look at Barack Obama, we look at President Barack Obama. He has he has a media department. He has Secret Service. He has all these other things. But the minute you know Michelle Bachman or or Ted Nugent or any other knucklehead on the right comes out and says something that's that's that's, that's even 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 remotely racist, black people rally around this rally around this president, regardless of what President Obama has done or has has not done. It's like it's as if him be him him being slighted in the slightest way, even if it doesn't impact us in any way means more to us than black people who are suffering under these structures of 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 of, of these structures of you know structural racism that create poverty every day that means more we got to protect the president but who cares about the policies that put black people in a you know in a in a in, in these situations these impoverished situations so this kind of Pavlovian, in a way, the way we react to racism. You know, anytime you attack one of our good black people, our rich black people, our elite black people, we just rally to the scene. It 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 tears away at any sort of kind of mobilization or grassroots movement that we're trying to build because we feel, for whatever reason, that we have to protect the rich black person against the knuckleheads. I mean, do you see that tie-in? Yeah, well, this, this, this is a phenomenon that's basically called, you know, linked fate or racial kinship. And linked fate and racial kinship is an illusion. Right? There's no reason why a black man who owns 15 McDonald's chains, who basically is arguing to make sure that we do not increase minimum wage, should have the same political orientation or framing as his employer that works, you know, in the back frying french fries. Why should their politics be the same? Because they have the same complexion? He probably lives in a nice house in the suburbs. He's doing well financially. Everything is great. He want to make sure he can. He wants to make sure he can pay his employees as low a wage as possible. He's not interested in unionizing fast food. He's not interested in giving him health care benefits. He has an employee who is basically, you know, scrounging, working barely minimum wage, a little above that, has no health care, probably doesn't work forty hours a week, and yet both of them are going to be saying, "Yeah, we are hoping change. We love Obama." Why are their politics the same? Because they have brown skin? There's no reason their politics should be the same. And this kind of linked fate, racial kinship mentality that comes from this notion or that all of us are black as black folk are sticking together against the man is ridiculous because it's an illusion. What it is, it's an illusion about a construct that is, that is designed to otherize us from the reality that this system comprehensively and collectively works to the disadvantage of working people, laborers, Poor people, people on the margins, and people who are not basically given these certain tools to move up in the machine because of their class status in society. And one of the reasons why this particular race discourse, this race speak, is so prevalent and is so uh, ubiquitous in American society is that it avoids us having to talk about class as a society, particularly in a black community. Because think about it. You have someone like a Tim Wise, who's a professional anti-racist. That's what he does. Talking about the problem, about racism, how racism is a problem. Do you know? Do you know what basically stops the Tim Wise industry? 
a conversation about how class demobilizes the black poor and the black community. You know why? Because he doesn't have the cultural competence to enter that conversation. Because he can't talk about bourgeois Negroes and how they crush black folk with the policy they support. Like in Massachusetts, you had a uh, health care uh, uh, um, uh, minority, African-American health care uh, uh, company, nonprofit, that was advocating. And I actually put this on YouTube. And they proudly displayed this YouTube advocating to have young black males who wear saggy pants, dropping pants, basically charged with criminal offenses. They were proud as a black mental health organization in the state of Massachusetts. They were, they were bragging about the fact that they got the state to implement laws that increase mass incarceration or the capacity to lead to that for young black males. Well, let, 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 me, let me interrupt you. Let me interrupt you right there. My point. Where does Tim Wise come in that conversation? He can't come well, in that conversation. Two points. Two points. I, I have never, I have never accepted Tim Wise as an authority on anything, and you know, I, I but, but I'll, I'll get to that in a second. But what you just, what you just touched on is, it goes into something else, which is the politics of respectability, where some black people, some black, black organizations get their respect from, from, from uh, the, the dominant class, from the dominant culture, by how willing they are to criticize other black people. So if I say to, if I say to white people, look, I'm different from these other black people. I can differentiate myself from these other black people, then that kind of pushes me up a notch on the totem pole. Isn't that part of the politics of, 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 of black respectability? Of course. That's the, that's, that's the linchpin of the politics of respectability. And as we talked about in our last segment, that's something that goes back over 100 years. It goes back, it goes back to Booker T. Washington. Actually, even, even Frederick Douglass engaged in that, in, that, in that kind of politics. So this is nothing that's alien to the black community. And it's fundamentally designed to make the, you know, those Negroes who are the genteel, bourgeois, uh, educated class, or those who are you know, well-versed in the, 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 the proper accoutrement of how to function in society, to, to, to inure themselves or make themselves acceptable to the status quo by saying, I'm not like the rest of those darkies. I'm not going to see, you see, they are the problem. You know, and, and this happens in, happens in subtle ways, and it happens in, in not so subtle ways. And what happens is that you will often find that sometimes that they will sign on to policies that will continue to give them that special status while otherizing and, and, and pathologizing and excluding you know, the black poor and the working class from consideration because they are not you know, in tune with us. Yet these two, these two different, vastly different parties, one being parasitically damaged by the other, by policy, we're all saying, we all support the Democrats and Obama because they represent us. This is insane. This is ridiculous. What kind of group of four people aligns their politics with people who are setting a policy that hurts them at times just because they have the same skin color? It doesn't make sense. Well